Okay, it's all on. Um, over to you, Anna. Okay, okay, here I am. Good. Hi, everybody. Um, my name's Anna Demeni, and uh, I'm super excited to present to you today, actually, and extremely nervous as well. So I'm hoping you guys can hear me, and hopefully you can see my screen as well. We can hear you, Anna, and uh, we can see your screens as well. Okay, awesome. Just a second, please. To find my presentation. Okay, cool. So today I'm going to speak to you about um, CDS or Common Data Services. Uh, static apps and GitHub Actions as well. Um, so this is more like an introductory um, presentation. So if you know all about CDS, if you know a bit about static apps and something about GitHub Actions already and you've tried it already, then maybe this presentation isn't quite for you. It's going to be quite you know, beginner wise, and I'm just going to show you what I managed to do within a space of a few weeks. Um, so once again, my name's Anna Demeni. I work for Microsoft as a partner technical architect. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn or Twitter. Um, I specialize in Power Platform actually and common data service and integration scenarios like that. So I'm not an Azure whiz, uh, so I'm super um, humbled and honored to actually be here today and, and speak to you guys. Um, so that's why I'm a bit nervous. Um, but my specialty is actually the, the Power Platform and CDS, but I'm just so excited of all of the new possibilities of integrating these services that I'm, I'm just going to go in and, and show you something today. So a few um, things that are in, interesting about me, or at least I think they're interesting about me, um, are my two big passions. Um, first of all, First of all, I really like cooking, so I cook all of the time in my spare time. If you're friends with me, I probably try to feed you at least once. Um, I'm very much a feeder and a host, and I, I, I just love cooking. So the highlight of my year is purchasing a, an original KitchenAid, which is an overpriced stand mixer. Then I also like to travel, which is something that I can't do anymore for a while, but I have traveled around the world uh, just last year. So within my travels, um, I took the most amazing pictures of my life, which are the, those two with the whale sharks. So I was able to swim with whale sharks. I'm a diver and a free diver as well. So if you share those passions, again, uh, follow me on Twitter, get in touch. Um, I'm, I'm super interested in, in that stuff. Other than that, in my day-to-day -day world, I actually go into Power Platform quite a lot. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Power Platform. You probably are because you're all geniuses anyway. But I'm just going to talk to you about it a little bit anyway from my point of view. So I used to be a developer and then I was a consultant and then I was a technical lead and now I work for Microsoft. So I've been surrounded by software sort of all of my life, all of my professional life at least. Um, so I was quite impressed when Power Platform came into, um, into place because all of a sudden I could do a lot of the things that I that I would be able to do before, only much faster. So uh, this is actually a suite of applications, and they talk to each other, um, and they do stuff in common, and you can just extend whatever functionality you've got um, at a very high level with very many teams and other people, and you can collaborate and so on and so forth. But it's a low code platform, so we don't write much code within the Power Platform itself. We build a suite of business applications, so you need to be licensed to be able to use them. Um, 
and then we tend to integrate with the outside with the outside world and this is where you know that connection with coding and with uh, various options within azure um, sort of um, appears and this is why it's really good that you know a little bit of that as well even if you're on the power platform side or if you're on the on on the opposite spectrum and you're not a um, um, a citizen developer as well, so you don't do you you don't really fancy doing drag and drop, or you don't like um, working as a functional consultant. You'd much rather just control the entirety of your functionality that you're gonna build and you're gonna write all of the code. It's still super interesting to know that you can still integrate with the Power Platform. Um, so if someone else has built um, a capability like that, then you can easily just play with whatever they've done as well. Um, but also you get more adoption within your code also. So this is why I believe there's real value within the Power Platform, even if you are purely a developer. So. How do we actually do all these uh, integration points? We actually use data. So data is a big deal within the common data uh, within the Power Platform. Um, it cannot work without it. It needs it to, um, to be analyzed via Power BI. It needs it to be able to um, build some actions and, and an application using you know, Power Apps. And now we have um, three types of Power Apps. We've got Canvas Apps. We've got model driven apps and then we have power portals as well. Um, so you need all of these data to actually interfaces, interface it within all of these different types of apps. You can also use AI Builder. You can use Power Automate to actually automate some of your capability, but also you can, uh, you can now use uh, Power Virtual Agents or chatbots as well. So, as you can see already, there's it's quite a rich set of functionality that's based on a set of data essentially, and they all connect using what we call connectors. These connectors actually within the Power Platform, they are called common data services. So within the Power Platform, everything connects within the, the, the very same central repository, and then you can build stuff on top of it. So this is what the common data services actually means. It's not quite a database. It's a lot more than that. And well, in in a second, I'll I'll, I'll show you you know a bit more about about what it is. But what once once you've got it, the point is, you can actually build some apps. So the applications that I was talking to you about a little bit earlier um, these are this can be uh, canvas apps um, which are more of a citizen developer types of apps they work with drag and drop you create um, a pretty mobile view that um, the people within your organizations uh, within your organization, they can use it to actually um, make their life easier. So to input data, to read data, to move around and to process data as well. Um, and it's mobile, so they use their phone to do it actually. So it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, you can have Power Apps connected to common data services, but also to other um to to other web sources as well um so you can use connectors to various type of, um, of of data sources not just the common data service in fact you get a power apps um license straight away with your office 365 so that's just for you to be able to um enhance your productivity in your day-to-day -day work and it doesn't really have a common data service so it's it's, it's super um flexible from that point of view model driven apps on the other side are very much a back-end um a sort of um, functionality and they have a lot out of the box and because they come with this rich 
set our functionality, they can only talk to the common data service. So the common data service, once again, is not just a database. It comes with this huge range of things that it does via an API as well, but also out of the box and it leverages um, security and business logic and so on and so forth. And these are the things that it does by itself. So it needs the common data service. Power, uh, power portals also uh, need the common data service because they interface the data that we store internally and we manipulate using the model driven app. But actually, we want to have a B2C interaction now. So yeah, so our consumers can actually have a look at, uh, at their profiles and data that we're working with. Flows, AI Builder, Power BI, Power Virtual Agents, these are automation tools that, um, you know, allow you to actually report on your data, to value your data by enriching it with AI Builder, um, but also to increase productivity um, by having some really smart bots um, you know, in the back end and leveraging that capability rather than human interaction all of the time. So these are all labs that you can just build out of the box if you've got a common data service um, instance. Um, so I really, really um, uh, encourage you to try it if you haven't already. For the things that I said, they don't necessarily need to come into the common data service, but also for things that we want to extend outside of common data services, we have these external connectors. Um, there are a bunch of them already, over 350, and they're getting built um, all the time, all the time. In fact, in my day-to-day -day job, um, what I do most of the times is um, help ISVs build connectors with their own capability. So what these guys want to do is build a solution, but this solution is almost always a lot more than the Power Platform and the Common Data Service. They, they in fact, have a suite of other applications, but they want to connect them all together and publish them on App Source so that they can sell together with Microsoft sellers. In order to do that, you need to create an external connector and us as a, a partner team are helping our partners achieve that. So if your company wants that as well, you can reach out to me um, and I'll put you on the right path to doing so. Great, so I hope that we now have an idea of, of, about what, common data, what the common data service is. So it's a way of easily structure, uh, structuring data. So you can just uh, create entities and you've got some entities um, by default as well. It's got a variety of data um, already in stored and, and also you can, uh, you can interface with other types of data as well and you'll see in a second. So it's a huge variety of data that's easily structured. It's got its own business logic but the point is it wants to support interconnected applications and processes. So what it wants to do is to um, break out siloed uh, environments. So if you've got a big monolith and it's really difficult to uh, take care of it anymore and so on and so forth, but if you would like to actually add some more um, some, some more functionality on top of it, but you're afraid that you're just gonna make it even bigger and harder to maintain, then common data service, again, it's a really cool thing because it can just interact with whatever you are. And I am including hybrid processing here as well. Most of the things that I'm going to show you today are actually cloud. But if you've got on-prem services, you can easily integrate like that as well. And it's got its whole security um, um, suite as well. So it's very much compliant. Um, with the laws, but also with um, various business units or verticals that you might be working in. So uh, common data services um, widely used within banking, uh, you know, the NHS, or I don't know, insurance business, anything you could think of. Cool. So the heart is once again an API. Once you plug in a common data service 
and you create just one entity, then you've got an API endpoint. This is what happens in the background. And this API endpoint would actually uh, feed on all of the um, applications and, and processes that I talked to you about just, just before, right? But that also means that you can directly integrate using Visual Studio or Xamarin services as well. So you can just write your own code to actually integrate with the common data service. What is got out of the box again is got security and compliance. So it does authentication and authorization out of the box. It does auditing as well. And this is all configurable also. Um, it's got its own logic. So it comes with calculated fields, rollout fields. Um, it's got various jobs running in the background, or you can create new ones. You can have business rules within within your forms or or within your business in in general. So that again is an out of the box citizen developer tool. Um, it knows duplicate detection straight away, um, but it's really a really powerful um, workflow engine. Also, you just need to be a little bit careful with how you structure your logic as well, of course. As I said before, you can also write your own code and, and just expose plugins. It's got various types of data, so it's got its own data catalog, but you can also do reporting. It's got offline capabilities as well. Um, and very important, it exposes a common data model that you can then use, that, and that's the out of the box thing. So you can just use it within all of the services on top of the common data model, on, on top of the common data services, um, and it just exposes the same data straight away. Um, so that so that's pretty cool. Supports various types of storage as well. And finally, we can integrate. So this is my favorite bit because we we're, we're coming with this really strong, powerful uh, product. And this used to be um, dynamic CRM, and we would extend it and call it um, XRM actually because you could. Um, you could build your own stuff on top of CRM, and that would be in the form of uh, plugins, custom workflow activities, JavaScript, and, and, and so on and so forth. Right now, you can actually extend it beyond that XRM layer, and you can actually integrate with um, event hubs, you can have uh, web hooks, you can export directly into SQL um, or to Data Lake, uh, you can use Azure Functions. Um, so the, the possibility is really huge here with regards to what you can do with, uh, with the common data service. I'm going to talk to you a bit about the common data model as well, because this is a very important bit that the common data service actually has. Um, the common data model, as I said, is able to expose the, the same entities and functionality within various applications. So that includes Power BI, Dynamics 365, Power Apps within Azure, within Power Virtual Agents. So these entities are, 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 are things that do stuff on their own. Um, and we've, we've actually got an example here with this account entity. You can see straight away. Um, it's got a description already. It's business first. Um, this is where you would uh, input your, your customer base. It's got a set of attributes already. So all of a sudden you've got this account entity um, and it comes with a form and it comes with um, business rules out of the box as well, and with a set of functionality and relationships and so on and so forth. Um, you can take this entity and use it in whatever first party app or within a power app as well. And this is why, so you're, you've, you got started already. This is why this is, this is so important actually to have a look at. All of them together, that are run or on, on Azure. So they expose a single endpoint, but it actually runs on hundreds of thousands of virtual machines in the background. And these virtual machines um, 
actually can talk to a very varied type of um, of data store in the background. Why is this important? It's important because every time we talk about the common data service, the, the first thing that I hear always is, yes, but it's expensive. No one said it's inexpensive. But what we're saying is the investment put into this system and the way it's going and the functionality that's, that, that, that it's got already, so that's premier type API straight into um, uh, Power Apps, Automate, Air Builder, Power BI, and, and the other services as well. These need to hang on a very a firm structure and this firm structure I'm, I'm showing to you within within this diagram. So it's it's pretty important to to notice that this is why it can scale up or down, and this is why it will work on on high loads or on low loads as well. And this is why you can have um, very complex systems in the cloud in hybrid mode as well. And of course, you can integrate with with with, with other services as well. So. Within here, you only have Azure services, right? But we all know that once you've got an Azure service, then you've got on-prem as well. And then you've got, you know, AWS, Google Cloud, so on and so forth. So you're taking this tool and you're actually integrating it into a world of possibilities, no matter what your customer, you know, has in store, no matter their environment or ecosystem, you can still use this. And this is why it's so actually powerful. The extensibility model looks like this. So we talked about APIs, but it also has a very rich SDK as well. So you can use that also. Um, it's got, it's solution aware and it, it, it has a, an application lifecycle management uh, pool as well. Joe was uh, right, right before me, so he, is like really good at this stuff as well um, at, at actually uh, deploying these things and integrating it with an Azure DevOps pipeline and, and so on and so forth. So all of that, <clears throat> it's already already embedded and, and production ready essentially. Um, so you can absolutely use it uh, like that. What we're building Finally, it's an intelligent business application platform. I would like to reiterate the fact that in order to use this stuff, you need a license. So lately I've been involved in quite a few hackathons where people build their own apps. Um, and whilst these apps are, are super cool and, and very intuitive and um, they're so innovative and creative and people build um, all sorts of solutions for COVID-19, for example, or for helping other people and so on and so forth. It's very important to understand that this is a business application suite, so you cannot interface it with an, an end customer unless you're using a power portal. So at the moment, a power portal is the only thing that allows you to interface with a user, so with a customer. All the rest require a license. Yeah. So for Canvas apps included, you have to have a license. You cannot, you cannot just expose it. And it integrates with all of these other solutions as well. Okay. So I rambled on for quite a bit. I'm hoping that. Um, you are not extremely bored by this so far. So I'm just going to quickly take you into my environment. One thing to note here is that, first of all, it's on my other screen. So if I'm looking, like, just have a look at my rings or something. Um, so one thing to note here that I would like to show you is the fact that this is a brand new environment. So you can all have brand new environments. You can apply for a trial. My colleague, Chris Huntingford, he's super good at explaining how to get uh, a Dynamics trial with Office 365 um, and a lot in it. So I have all of that stuff I can actually show you. 
is for you to see my environment. This is what I've got. So I've got everything, right? So I've got Outlook, I've got OneDrive, I even have Teams, SharePoint. I can actually receive emails on this Outlook client, right? I've got Power Automate. I've, I've got all sorts of apps. I'm licensed for them under a trial license. So you can do that as well and just start building straight away. Uh, and I'll drop you a link on how to do that from my colleague, as I, as I said before. Okay, so I just spun up this environment. And what I've done is I've started with a common data service environment. And you can see that, so I'm at uh, make.parouts.com. Um, and I only have like a common data service environment here. And these are the entities that I just received out of the box, hoping that this will actually load. Cool, great. So these are part of the common data model, account, activity, address, appointment, and more and more things are going to be added out of the box within the common data model, including, I know, mixed reality stuff. So that's already there for you to use with your um, connected field service, or there are um, finance and operations uh, entities out of the box, and so on and so forth. So, um, I only caught a little bit of, of Joe's presentation earlier, but you guys were talking about your right. You can do that with Dynamics as well now and the common data model. Cool. So what I've done here on top of my well, of, of what I had already is I've actually created um, a brand new entity for me. As I said, I really like cooking, so um, I'm attempting to build um, a cookbook. I'm only at the beginning. But still, I have this entity. What you can observe about this entity is, uh, first of all, it's got a prefix. So that means I have done my own prefix and I have everything embedded within a solution. You can see my solution here. I've created it and it's got my own stuff. So all of a the sudden, these are the entities out of the box that I can use at any point in time. But also, this is the stuff that I've configured already. So everything, every time I do something, I will just include it within a solution. So then I can actually deploy it and to other environments or to other customers and, and so on and so forth. So we'll just go on to this entity. Uh, I only have a few fields, so just a few fields. A few of the fields are actually calculated fields, like, uh, for example, in ingredient number. So this means that every time I add a new ingredient, a, a new ingredient for this dish, this number will increase as well. And that means that whenever I want to say, Ooh, what can I, you know, uh, what can I make with just three ingredients? I could just, you know, find the list of dishes. Very important, we've got relationships out of, the, out of the box as well. What I have here is, a, is an end-to-end -end relationship with the entity ingredient, which is pretty much the most complex relationship type that you can have. And um, I can also add business rules. I've got views. So these are, how, how do I want my data to be filtered within the, with the, within my my app but also i have forms so here is where i actually interface my um just my uh, fields the fields that i wanted to show and this is all done just in a model driven app in my case because all i want to do is um is have a back-end type system so if I, if I click on that you can see i've only added my two uh, entities here. Um, I've uploaded quite uh, like a few bits of data here, 30 recipes. But if we go on to each recipe, we'll see that it's got a related set of ingredients as well. I'm wondering if I have anything with this one. No, I know I don't. Let's start from the ingredients. So these are the ingredients. A very common ingredient, I would say, is maybe bacon. This is something that goes into many dishes. It only has a name, but actually it can relate to dishes here. And I see the associated view. Now this is super powerful because I didn't need to do much. Um, I just needed to upload data using the, uh, the XRM toolbox, actually in my case. 
and this is what it looks like. So now I can go on and extend this. I can add, add more fields. I can do. I can add um, a Canvas app as well. Um, I can add the Power Virtual Agent, or I can even do a chatbot here. So I can just create a, a chatbot here. And this is all because I've got a CDS. This is why CDS is so, so important in, 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 in my opinion. Now, what I've actually done is I've integrated with a static web app. So for this static web app, um, a colleague of mine actually helped me um, because he's a cloud solution architect and he was super into this technology. Um, and he's created a static app for me and then I've just modified what, whatever he created. But what I'd like to show you today is how we actually change something using um, GitHub Actions as well. So I'm just, I don't know if I should do this right now. No, let's just go into a little bit of information about static apps and then we'll change something and, and, and watch um, a GitHub workflow and some actions uh, taking place. Um, it's just because it, it sort of takes five minutes to to run. So why have I integrated with a with with a, with a static web app? Um, I've done this. I don't know how I got to this. Yeah. So I, I, I've done this because, as I said, normally you don't just built a CDS solution. You have to integrate it with other things as well. And it, it seems to me like the, the newest things that are there there are out there are the easiest ones to actually integrate with um, with with the CDS. And when I was working, I used to work at this bank and we had a lot of web services um, there and they were sending data and processing data and so on and so forth. Um, but the problem that I had is that I'm, I'm not a DevOps engineer. So I don't know how to create environments. I don't know how to create containers. I don't know how to, um, you know, just make my environment at all. So I don't know how to have something that just runs in the background. So I would just integrate with Azure Functions. And this colleague of mine, he's like, oh, no, 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 you can do that now with static web apps, which is a preview um, of, which is in preview right now. And this service actually, actually uh, automatically builds and deploys a full stack web app for you. So the only thing I that I've done was to just follow a step by step and it just did it for me. It was it was quite incredible actually. So so what it does um, at the other end of your web app of your static web app is that you get uh, static files. So for me, it was like a bit like going back to basics a little bit. So nothing builds dynamic dynamically and anymore. You don't need much of a web server. Um, so it, it builds it for you and then all you need to do is just return the files just, just as they are. Um, so it relies a lot on the client and not on the um, back end actually. Um, so it's great for so it so it hosts your application as well um so here it's gonna host html css javascript and, and images as well uh, you can't write a static app in c sharp well so it's it's front end right um you can use angular or react native or javascript right but but not c sharp at this point in time However, it does have integrated API support uh, with Azure Functions. Uh, it's a first uh, party GitHub integration, so um, it deploys as well. Um, it can globally distribute your static con uh, content straight away. So, so that's pretty cool as well. So for you, it's offering you all the certificates that you need. Um, you can build custom domains, so just Add your own naming. Of course, right now they are um, th these domains are, are named like uh, sea creatures or sea um, 
environments or names or words or whatever, which I love, by the way. Um, it's got a pretty cool security model as well. So I'll, I'll show you how I configured mine in Azure. Um, it, it does provide authentication, so it goes straight into uh, Azure uh, Active Directory so and other services as well. So this is why for me it was like super easy just to connect it. Otherwise, I don't think I would have known how to write the authentication actually. Um, you can have roles with this authentication as well. It provides these really smart routing rules. So whenever you're on a page, you can route it to wherever you want it to go next. So that's pretty cool. Um, and the coolest bit it has is that it generates staging versions. So you'll see what happens, but when you actually build this stuff, um, it builds a second environment for you. And then you can, um, so when you push a change, it builds a second environment for you. And then you can have a look uh, at what, what it looks like and probably test it and everything. And only then merge your ch changes into master. So that's pretty cool in my, in, in, in my opinion, just because you don't need any tooling. It, it all happens within your browser. So, so that's pretty cool. Uh, and you'll see that it integrates with CoSpaces as well, which is another hype word like that. Um, uh, it's just been released and promoted by Scott Hanselman at uh, 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 Build uh, this year. So it sort of looks like this. One of the greatest benefits, so it, it, it looks like this, right? Um, you've got a request and then you, this is all under GitHub. So GitHub Actions would actually allow you to build a full CI CD pipeline um, within, yeah, just, just, just within your code repository as well. So you don't need Azure DevOps right now for this. Um, that's not to say that Azure DevOps is going away. No, it's not. But it's just that this GitHub Actions thing um, is going to get richer and richer and more powerful. And it said that in like a year or so, it's going to match Azure DevOps as well. So that's pretty cool because it enables even more people to collaborate and, and build cool stuff. But one of the greatest benefits of Azure Static Web Apps is the fact that it can have an Azure Function API. Um, so that means that it will just host your API in Azure Functions and it will globally distribute your, your, your um, static assets and you gain availability and speed and also super cheap as well because you don't have to set up all of the uh, environment necessary for this. So um, as you can see, I really like this because this is something that even I can build. So that's pretty cool. So you, you saw the image, oh, this one, um, this is stolen from Learn. <laughs> Um, and I guess, I guess what we're doing is that we're creating um, a repository in Angular or React or Vue. Um, and this would throw out a static website and it, it sort of has a, an index.html page. Um, but then you can also create an API. So the, the, the thing with this here, in my case, my colleague Jason, he built an Angular app. Um, but then what happened, he was able to push that via GitHub Actions. Um, uh, so he pushed it to GitHub and then um, my Azure portal did something crazy and it ran this workflow. So <laughs> once you create a, a static web app, you've got this workflow with actions. So these actions ran and in my, in, in, in my case, I actually created um, a few HTML pages. Um, and it does have an API layer as well, so an Azure function that in my case, of course, it talks to the CDS. So you'll see it sort of integrates with uh, CDS in, in my case. So let me show you quickly how it does that. Cool. <clears throat> this is my GitHub. This is my solution. You can see my workflow right here. Um, and under source, you'll have like the various components. 
and it's got like a menu here and it looks like this so it's I've already set it up. You can see gentle see, haha, very funny. You can also access it from here. So from your Azure portal, if you go here, you could, so if you go onto this GitHub, you'll find a step-by-step -step on how to actually deploy this stuff onto your tenant as well. And you'll get something like this. Um, so it looks, uh, you know, a static web app. And in here, you've got this overview page and it's got the URL as well. So if I click on this, um, it will take me at the same place. And I need to log in for recipes uh, if I want to get the recipes from my CDS. So why don't we just do that? Let's, let's do it. So you can see this actually uses single sign-on and it will connect to my CDS. Uh, and f at the moment, it brings out this uh, like not great layer. But as you can see, all of a sudden, um, I've got like the best BLTs. So I can see here that I can search for uh, the, the best BLTs. So this is like I've got this already, right? Let's just create a new one quickly for you to see that it actually integrates, so it's not just gibberish. So I'd say um, apple pie, because this is something I really like, and I probably have the ingredient name named apple as well. So I just need to save this. I'm not going to add any more information. Um, I don't need any more information. All I'm going to add is just one ingredient. So you can see here that I've got the associated view and I can just add an existing ingredient for me. I want to add an apple. Please have an apple. Yeah, I've got apples. Add. Cool. So this is here now. And then if I go into apples, we'll see the related dishes. And here it is, apple pie. OK, cool. So let's see what happens. Well, Sorry, I don't know how to move that. Okay, cool. Uh, so let's see my hopefully apple pie here. Uh, I'll just give it a moment to actually. Let's see if he's got it already. <laughs> I've got two. Yay, apple pie. So this is like the, the thing that I just created, right? You guys saw that there was there was no other apple pie in my database. I only have one. I've just created it now. Um, so it integrates seamlessly straight away. So uh, people monitoring my static app will actually have access to the same information that I do, which is pretty cool. OK, cool. Going back, how does this actually connect? So if we go on to configuration, no, I'll just go here, add the registrations. OK, so when you deploy a static app, it will uh, run on Microsoft Graph, actually. So it will have it by default. But then what you can do is actually add a permission for Microsoft CRM. So just click add permission and then you'll be able to um, just connect to Dynamic CRM and it does single sign on. So that's pretty cool. Great. Awesome. And now let's just do something. Let's just uh, build this, this thing with, um, with GitHub Actions. So uh, I can just click on edit this file. Um, so let's just change this um, and let's just say uh, about me. Oh, yeah, we can include some PHP. Oh, sorry, not PHP. <laughs> I mean HTML. Uh, let's see. Normally, 
name is Tell Stuff. I mean, but you know, it is what it is. Okay, cool. So we have changed this. Um, I'll create a new branch because I want it again. I want it to actually create a, a, a static app for me. So I'm not going to com commit directly into master. I'm, I'm just going to propose this stage and this will take me into so, and I can create a pull request as well. So let's just do that. So this is my CICD pipeline. Isn't this super cool already? And I've got this uh, pull request here. You can see it's already started doing stuff. So for us to be able to see what it does, we're going to go into actions. And you'll see that it, it sort of does stuff like it checks things and then it will try and deploy things. So right now it's, uh, it's, it's just set up the job and but then you can see here like step by step what it actually does and if it fails because it might fail, it failed for me, then you, you can see it in here and maybe we'll go into the workflow uh, file as well if we have a little bit of time. Um, as it builds, because as I say, it takes about five minutes, of course, no, it worked, normally it won't work. Um, this quickly, uh, so it's still building and deploying. Um, in the meantime, let's just have a look at uh, GitHub Actions just for a little bit. Okay, cool. So you got the gist about uh, Azure Static Web Apps and I'm happy to sort of um, give you this deck as well. Um, so as I said, GitHub Actions will automate, customize, and execute your software um, from your repository. So as you have your code within GitHub, um, you don't need anything else. So now there's this um, native developer experience, if you want. If, if you want, it's super simple to get started. Um, there are there's loads of documentation you can do like uh, step by step and then you'll see exactly how it builds it tests and deploys like I'm showing you here as like a super scalable workflow you can just um, you can just edit it and uh, it's pretty much the community standard for or for automation or it will be um, so we believe that it will be because it's just natively integrated with 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 GitHub and has this front end back end thing where um, you can just use Azure Functions and then uh, you can just accelerate you know whatever you're building. Uh, but now now it's right now it's still in preview, so I would say try it out, have fun with it. Um, but yeah. Be, be careful with static web apps for now, but for other things, you can still do a full CI/CD um, environment um, and it will work with any language you want. Um, so as I was saying about the community standard, it's just because people are starting to use it um, more and more and more. In fact, we've got this really, really nice, um, you know, quote from, uh, someone at uh, from from someone at Pinterest. Someone came off mute. Is that because you want to tell me I'm out of time? Hello. And, and we still got like you know, eleven minutes to go, so you're not definitely not out of time. So can I please request everyone to keep your mic mute? Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Great, because I was starting to rush as soon as <laughs> as soon as I realized that. Um, but um, you know, I'm 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 almost there. Um, but because uh, I, I really want to show you my project actually built. Um, but but I just wanted to for, for you to see. By the way, this uh, these slides these slides are taken from a. Um, uh, a deck that's public. It's out there already. Uh, I found it um, on, on a website um, and it's like a really comprehensive set of um, functionality and the information with regards to how uh, GitHub Actions actually work. But in just in layman's term, um, 
it will mimic Azure DevOps essentially, and you will be able to hold all of your code within GitHub and then build it there as well, which is pretty interesting um, because it will increase your speed for sure. Uh, and it allows you to, uh, to communicate a lot more and to collaborate with other people a lot more. Um, in, in my opinion, this is a big statement towards Microsoft's openness for um, open source. Um, so I've had quite a few um, sessions with partners where they still seem to have their doubts around um, Microsoft's openness to open source. I don't think there's a better state, um, you know, um, statement that are actually making GitHub uh, completely co co compliant with Azure DevOps and making it all, you know, online um, and just the code spaces <clears throat> release alone, I think is, is super, super cool. If you guys haven't seen the, the code spaces release, I, um, I do encourage you to have a look at the build recordings um, because it's, it's really, really cool to see that you can um, interact with the project without actually building your own environments in the back end. Um, it, it just does it for you uh, via code spaces on GitHub. So uh, if, if you're like me, um, then this is a, a very strong step forward because uh, you might have knowledge actually in other areas and you don't always have access to a DevOps engineer or to a, to a networking engineer to help you build all of your, all of your stuff. So cost basis is, is actually really cool. Um, great, so let's just see, do you guys wanna see if um, my workflow actually built? I'll say that, I'll, I'll take that as an enthusiastic yes. Um, cause it has built, cause of course it would. I only modified the about me page. Um, but look at this. So it essentially, um, it does everything for you. Um, you can see it's, it's, it's done like a Docker build and, um, it's creating my virtual environment. And a lot of things just by itself. So, so that's pretty cool in, in my book, at least. Um, and it's a lot of information here. So it's really cool for your, um, just to see if something went wrong and so on and so forth. Um, so let's just check it out. Let's see what it looks like. So if I go back, this is still a pull request, right? So it's updated my um, about me. And we can see here again what, what happened. And it says here that my stage site is ready to visit. Um, so you can see it's, it's um, added the version of this actually build. So I've done quite a few tries on this. And if I click on here. So this is my old site. Yeah, let, let me just close this down. Start from scratch. So if we go on to Azure and here, we'll be able to access my website. And I'll go to about me page and this is the old text, yeah? And then if I go ooh, on to GitHub, And I actually have a look at my pull request and then go here. Then I'll see I've got a staging app as well. So this is just a copy that is just pan out for, for me. And here I am. And I did uh, do a spelling mistake, but that's just because I'm very nervous. Um, so as you can see right now, if I'm saying, yeah, I actually, I, I like this one and I go back into my GitHub and I say, yeah, I would like to merge this pull request. Then actually this will merge my, uh, this will merge my 
um, my action and what I and, uh, and what I've done already, and it will just update my initial site. It's still doing it, yeah. So right now it's just running the workflow for me. Normally you can see here as well that the workflow is running at the moment. Oh, by the way, when you are creating this from scratch, this will all uh, build it for you. Um, and you'll see, you know, workflow running, blah, blah, blah. So it's, it's, it's just going to do that. So this is still merging right now. And very soon, I have no pull requests. But right now I've got an action. This is actually merging my pull request and it will actually update my initial site. So I believe, oh, okay. And finally, we'll, we'll go back because I have like four minutes. So I'll just show you my thank you page. Um, just because it's got a pretty drawing done by me. But also because it's got some pretty cool, um, some 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 pretty good um, resources. I've been through all of those. Follow the learn Microsoft Docs learn. Um, since you're there, do a CDS, please. Just do a CDS um, learning path as well. Do a static caps uh, learning path also. But then the, the the whole GitHub thing is under docs as well. So documentation is really good on all of these subjects. I don't think you'll have any issues, um, you know, starting from from scratch actually. And if you do, you know, don't worry. This is my GitHub ex as well, so you can just fork whatever I built. And it's got the CDS solution as well and, and everything else. And I'll show you the link, on, the link on how to create a CDS environments also. So you can just um, get started. If there are any questions. Yeah, hi, Anna. Um, yeah. I do remember like my, um, when attending Microsoft Build, uh, they, this feature was uh, pretty much new and announced. So it's still in preview. Uh, but yeah. we're definitely expecting a lot more, like you know, changes to it, or maybe like you know, coming up with like um, come out for like you know, a general availability. So we got a question from Joe saying like any indication when static app will be in GA, and are there any plans to support Azure DevOps Kit repos as well? Um, first question: We do not have a timeline for uh, static web apps. Uh, as of now, uh, documentation is being updated almost daily um, and more and more people are getting involved, but we do not have um, uh, a very clear roadmap just yet. With regards to GitHub, CICD and uh, Azure DevOps, absolutely. So this will go hand in hand from now on. This is the indication that that we've got at the moment. Uh, GitHub's actions is, is quite new, so our main tool is still Azure DevOps. Fantastic. Um, so we've got another question here. Um, um, do you think the MS Power Platform build tools will be made available for GitHub actions? Yes, I do. Um, so far, they're not but I think they will be made uh, available. The application lifecycle management or DevOps tools for the Power Platform are still quite new. They're still changing. They do have their thieving issues still, but um, these things are evolving. And as things are evolving, we can see straight away that GitHub Actions are following the same path as well. Um, the last question here, um, to pull data from CDS using the Azure functions, does the user always have to have a license to CDS? Yes. Just uh, another question for me, um, or maybe two questions. So I, I realize that you've got the, the, the um, the YAML file as the action flow in, in the Azure um, web static web, web um, resource. Is that is that how you 
is that the way you set up the flow then or you just come in 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 um, the github action and create the flow how do you do that yes absolutely so it creates it for you but let me just show you what it looks like for me and it's got like if you follow the learning path it will show you how to actually create this this yaml file but yeah you can see straight away uh, that it generates like a token for me but then the like the bulk of things are here so all i'm doing is a build and i do have an api folder as well this is all pretty much out of the box but yes this is where you actually um define your your workflow okay the next question is um so you're you're displaying the the static uh, data uh, you what are you using as your api in the background within the web application or how yes. are you are you consuming so, and using to display that yeah yeah so uh, let me show you um so i just wanted to show you that look my build and my merge worked so i don't have a version 5 here first of all and then if i go back here you will see that so essentially you can have only static content and that's it but if you want some back some back end and, and some api as well then you have to create create an api folder but then the only thing that you're going to do within this api folder are going to be azure functions so this is the azure function capability so this is what actually in my case goes on to um this bit goes on to CDS and pulls out my recipes. Yeah, thank you very much. That's it. Thank you, Anna. You're and, uh, we, yeah, we are two minutes over. Um, but um, I, I'd like to thank you for this fantastic demo. It was really, really helpful. And uh, we can see that, like, in what static app can do. It's brilliant. It's um, So thank you very much, Anna, for coming over and presenting this um, uh, brilliant session. Uh, it's really, really useful. And uh, I will just uh, stop the recording and then we can move on to the next session. Thank you very much, everyone.